Hello, I'm Sean Mabley and welcome to my YouTube channel. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to build the game Snake on an Arduino. Now, let's take a look at how this works. First, before we look at the hardware and software aspects of this project, let me give a general overview of the game Snake. The rules and objectives of the game are fairly simple. The goal is to get the most points. To gain points, you need to guide the snake to get an app. For every apple you get, your score increases by one, and the snake's length also increases by one. Another thing you have to implement is having the snake's tail follow the path you're going. To better explain this, if the head of the snake turns right and then up, we don't want the tail to just go up. We want it to also turn right and then up, just like the head. The way we do this is we have a matrix storing the x and y coordinates of each point on the snake. Every time you move, the snake length function deletes the last point in the matrix and adds the new coordinate of the snake's head to the matrix. Now that we know the location of the snake, we need to have the apple's position randomly generated. The problem with randomly generating a position for the apple is that the apple could be placed on the snake. To ensure this doesn't happen, we check the x and y coordinates against all the coordinates in the snake matrix, and if there's a match, we randomly generate new coordinates. In the snake game, you can die in two ways. The first way is the head of the snake collides with the wall. To check this, we take the coordinates of the snake's head and see if they're outside the coordinates of the game board. The next way you could die is if the snake collides with its tail. To detect this, we compare each point on the tail to the head, and if they have the same coordinates, we end the game. Now that we looked at the rules and objectives, let's take a look at how we can implement this on an Arduino. For the hardware of this project, I used an Arduino Nano as the microcontroller, but you can use any microcontroller in the Arduino family. For the display, I used a Max 2719. The reason I chose this display instead of an LCD display is because the Max 2719 has a high refresh rate. The Max 2719 also has a good grid size of 8x8, to display stuff on this grid, we use the LED control library. As an input of the library, you need a 1x8 matrix, with each value of this matrix a column in the display. To format the columns, you put a capital B before an 8-digit number of 0 and 1s. If we stop the game right now and take a look at the third column, we can see the input is B0001000. This value would signify that the LED in the fourth row on the third column is lit up. Our display functions take the X and Y coordinates from the snake matrix and convert them into the format just explained. In this format, the current code looks like this. And the next component is a joystick module that we use to turn the snake. The data that it outputs is a coordinate between 00 and 1000 1000. In the middle, it has a coordinate of about 500-500. To process this data, we map the data and change the snake's direction according to what quadrant the joystick is detected in. Right now, we are trying to turn and the coordinate the joystick is outputting is 400-200. So, the snake does turn up because the coordinates are in the upper quadrant. Now, I want to demonstrate what happens when you die. The text of game over followed by the text of score and your score is displayed. To display your score at the end is fairly challenging because the score can vary. To do this, I translate the int version of the score to a string. Once the score is a string, we can use the substring function to look at each digit in the string and display it on the display. As always, the code and schematic for this project are available in the description of the video. Thank you for watching the video. Please consider subscribing and hitting the like button below. If you have any ideas for future videos, please put them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one.